Hello, I'm Nancy Edwards and I live in Ottawa. Uh, and I am the daughter of uh, Inglis Edwards, who narrated the story to me about some work that he did in Pal River uh, back in the 1940s. Uh, about 10 years ago, I decided that I would ask uh, my parents, Jean and Inglis Edwards, if they would uh, share some stories with me. And this is one of the ones that my dad shared. So it's called From Pipe Fitter's Helper to Award Winner. In 1946, Powell River was a thriving community of nearly 4,000 permanent residents. The town had built temporary army huts to accommodate the 1,000 or so students who arrived every summer to work. Dad was among those, working as a tinsmith, helping to tar roofs, and serving as a pipe fitter's helper for two summers while he studied mechanical engineering at the University of British Columbia. Wages were low, 50 cents an hour, but enough to help dad pay tuition fees. Dad was accommodated bunkhouse style, along with other temporary employees. He described interesting adventures, some frightening, like when he got burned with hot tar, others humorous, like being asked to pound a bowl shape in a large piece of metal. Turns out his creation was going to be used as a sink for the lead mechanic's cottage. The mill's first paper machine had been put in place by Dominion Engineering in 1927. A room was built around it that was large enough to eventually house a second machine. 20 years later, the new machine was being added. It had to be assembled and installed while the old one continued to run alongside it. But paper machines were not what excited Dad most. He was intrigued by the new Barker machine and wrote a third year mechanical engineering paper on this topic. The title was straightforward, but dull. Weyher Hauser type hydraulic Barker. Dad said it was the most interesting engineering design I'd ever seen. It was a brand new way of debarking logs. Before this, they'd use a big lathe, which peeled bark off by rotating a log with knife-like steel cutters. The old method did not get rid of all the bark. For the production of high quality pulp, all bark had to be removed. Using the new system um, involved rotating each log through a high pressure water system. Using his characteristically pragmatic ways of describing an engineering innovation, Dad demonstrated the process using his cane as a prop and continued. It's like a nozzle on your garden hose, he said. You squirt the water against the log and the bark comes off. The nozzle goes back and forth while the log turns. The water pressure separates the bark from the tree and then you are left with a clean log. It is totally done by hydraulics. An operator has a booth with one inch plate glass windows and can move the log back and forth using visual inspection to make sure all the bark is off. This efficient system could handle a log that was 19 inches in diameter. It took just two minutes to strip a log. Pal River was one of only two sites in the world with this type of machinery. The other was in Everett, Washington State. Dad estimated that the machine probably cost half a million dollars. It overcame the problem of dirty pulp in a big way. Dad got permission to take photos for his project and borrowed a camera. He got access to part of the plant where he did not normally work. Unfortunately, the camera shutter didn't work. He had a series of black prints and had to get permission to take photos all over again. Hmm. Sounds like a ruse to get another look at the spectacular machinery. If you ever wondered what 3D drawings looked like in 1947, Dad's paper is worth a review. His hand-drawn drafting was meticulous. I now understand where Dad's later experience and interest in conveyors came from. He described the impressive conveyors in Powell Rivers Mill, which carried logs, some as long as 75 feet up a 230 foot trough at 120 feet per minute. His project included pictures of that conveyor and trough alongside photos of massive circular saws and the prized Barker machine. 
Dad's concluding paragraph re revealed his vision of changing times. The trend to install machines and push buttons is fast supplanting the old methods of men and muscle, as is clearly seen by the increased output of bark wood with decreased numbers of men required. Dad's paper earned him a book award from the Council of the Engineering Society in British Columbia. The $25 award was enough to buy five books. When Dad graduated and sought full-time employment, he submitted his award-winning paper along with his resume to Dominion Engineering Limited. What a clever marketing strategy. He was invited for an interview with a local representative of the company who was based in Vancouver. They offered him a job in Montreal, which unbeknownst to dad, lined him up to meet my mother, Jean, who had grown up in Halifax. Getting from Vancouver to Montreal involved a train ride that took five days and five nights. Dad traveled coach. The steam engine had to be watered up at regular intervals. This involved filling the steam boiler because the engine was running on coal. There were lots of pit stops at small stations. In Banff, he recognized a fellow he knew from the University of British Columbia. His friend was stationed at a fire tower, watching for any signs of forest fires. He'd ride a horse into town, load up its saddlebags, and then walk the horse back to the fire station with the supplies. Russell, another former classmate, was also on the train. He had a first class seat and occasionally shared it with dad on the trip. They worked out a way for dad to join as the seventh boarder in the rooming house where Russell lived. Dad stayed there for several years. Mum was living just a block away with three other ladies. They called themselves the duplex dollies. Dad and mom eventually met, married, and started their family in Montreal. Dad worked for Dominion Engineering for 20 years before moving on to work for a company in Windsor, Ontario, that made conveyors. His summer work in Powell River remained a source of pride. Dad kept his original paper about the amazing barking machine and the books he won for his prize-winning paper long after he retired. <laughs>